Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Fear Free Passive Investing. I hope you are doing well. I hope you guys had a great 4th of July weekend, Independence Day. Um, I'm excited. We have some uh, tumultuous times right now, but I hope uh, that you had like a welcoming and embraceful and good time together with friends, with family, with whoever you celebrated with to kind of get away from some of the craziness and enjoy yourselves for a little bit. Uh, but I'm really excited to be back in uh, the podcasting seat again to talk real estate. So today we are going to do a bit of a mid-year update. It's I think it's like somewhere around the middle of the year right now. And uh, 2020 was, 2020 will go down as one of the craziest times in our history, I, for sure already. Uh, it's, it's June or July now, and uh, that's very obvious. <laughs> we're, we're barely halfway over the year and it's already going to be a historical year. So um, I started my year with some very lofty goals and, and we talked a lot about them on uh, the podcast back in January. And, um, you know, I was really excited about everything we were doing here at Bandit Capital, Fear Free Passive Investing. I was really stoked to get another year under our belt and start really making some progress. And, um, I, you know, I hit a little bit of a slump, to be honest, and, and a little bit of a sadness in my heart because I knew I wasn't going to hit some of those goals just because of everything that has been going on with COVID and everything. But honestly, the mid-year update is almost just as exciting to me as like a New Year's resolution. You know, how everybody gets excited about New Year's and makes these lofty goals and resolutions and yeah, everyone wants to do things. And I, I get caught up in that too. I'm really excited about New Year's stuff too, but um, I'm just as excited sometimes about the mid-year update because it's it's almost like a fresh reboot where you kind of get to check in on yourself, see what you're doing, and it always sneaks up on everyone. So obviously there's work to be done for everyone mostly, um, and I'm no different. So we're going to talk a little bit about where we kind of stand as a multifamily investment company and a mid-year update in uh, the multifamily industry in general. Um, so uh, let's, it makes most sense to start with how, how we started, like how we got this year started. Um, 2020 kicked off with more investors than ever, frankly, um, which is really exciting for me, um, especially to be talking to so many people who want to change their life through real estate and uh, welcoming me into that process and letting me be a part of that. And um, we had a really, really strong economy too. Yeah, we had strong rents. We had strong prices, a lot of competition for multifamily, and it was a tough world out there. And it still kind of is to that point, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But um, that's really how this year started. And I think a lot of people almost don't realize what they had. I, I, and I'm just going to talk about myself. I didn't realize how good we had it back then, um, looking at the situation right now, the landscape. Um, so let's talk about what happened. Obviously, COVID happened, and that happened. Uh, obviously, it started happening well before that, um, but it really started happening here around the February, March time frame, and that's right around the time we we started doing some, another deal, and just debt backed out. We talked about that on the podcast a lot. If you missed that episode, you can go back and look at that. But basically the entire debt market took a pause for a few minutes, for a few days to a few weeks. Some people here and there were still lending. Uh, but for the most part, most people just took a step back and a pause. Um, so what that meant for deals that were already in the process is um, they had a little bit of money left, but after that, it was done. And a lot of renegotiating, a lot of um, changing of terms. And that was really frustrating for operators. So what else happened? Rents, obviously, rent collections dropped um, for a lot of people, um, especially in other commercial real estate sectors like retail, office, multifamily. But we won't talk about that. But for multifamily, um, for the most part, I'd say most properties probably saw some sort of dip around the April time frame. Um, we were no different. Um, obviously, some of our properties fared better than others, uh, but deals that were in the process, deals that were already closed, were it is what it is, right? You can't go back and you know raise more money, or you could, in a sense. But for the most part, most deals that were already settled that were closed before that. Deals that were in process, and we did have one 
um, they just kind of fell apart and ours was no different. It fell apart. Then we restructured it back together and then it fell apart and we structured it back together and so on and so forth. And we're still in the process of closing that deal. So that was, that's almost like six months in the making pretty much. Um, so deals fell apart and there was a lot of panic in the commercial real estate sector, which was kind of interesting uh, because that's something I'd never really experienced before. We got, uh, I wasn't around, well, I was around, I wasn't in real commercial real estate during uh, the 2008 financial crisis. And so it was just interesting to see the fallout happening in real time, looking like it, we're reading a history book almost. And so the same thing started to happen, the same indicators. And so a lot of people were panicked, um, rightfully so. And so where let's that takes us pretty much up to where we're at right now so now where do we stand um we're still dealing with covid obviously everyone's still cautiously wearing their masks and staying home for the most part and hopefully not spreading it too much um you know there's conflicting data now it's become this politicized thing which is truly heartbreaking um to see us as a country falling apart over something that should be hopefully uniting us. But um, that's, that's for another topic for another day and maybe even another host who's an expert in that stuff. But anyway, we're still dealing with COVID. That's, that's very clear. Um, debt is coming back. And so a lot of those lenders that did take a pause actually started up again. And obviously there were some changes to the underwriting models uh, specifically, you had to account for reserves for the most part, um, interest reserves, payment reserves for 12 to 9 or 9 to 18 months sometimes, depending on the deal, depending on the location, size, a bunch of th different things. Uh, but debt is coming back. It's possible to close a deal and several have closed since then. Um, rent collections for the most part in most places are back up to where they were at pre-COVID, hopefully. Um, the big question on a lot of people's minds is uh, the stimulus money and the enhanced uh, unemployment benefits, but we'll talk about that in a second too. Um, but for now, rent collections are back up and uh, competition is back up for multifamily properties too. So um, you're starting to see properties trade again, which is really interesting. For a while, it was, <laughs> my inbox was like a ghost town. Nothing was coming in, but now it's a very, very consistent flow of properties. And, you know, panic has subsided for the most part. I, I know there's some people who are more worried than others, but the true panic that we were all going to die is it has subsided for the most part. Even the most staunch mask wearing, uh, stay at home, glove wearing people are still going out. Um, so that to me says that panic has has taken a back seat for a little while. And, you know, that's, it's important to look at where we're at right now and juxtapose that to where we were at in January, which is what I started this show with. And things have gone, it, it's almost like we lost that whole six months. Like, I, I don't know where it went. I don't know what we did with our time. Uh, sure, I put out a lot of videos, a lot of podcasts, but we, do we have a lot to show for it? I don't know. Um, and hopefully your situation's a little bit different, but to me, it sure felt like we lost that six months, which is, or four months, whatever it is, um, it sure feels like that anyway. Um, so let's talk about where we're going. Um, I mentioned competition is high for multifamily again, which means deals are trading again. And what's interesting is some people were asking me, uh, are multifamily deals getting discounts now? Like, are, are you seeing a lot of discounts? Are you getting properties for like dirt cheap? And the answer is absolutely not. Um, frankly, for, for someone who's novice and who's brand new to real estate investing, commercial real estate is valued on how much money that property brings in and how uh, the net operating income, income minus expenses. And so if your income didn't dip, like most people's income during COVID dipped a little bit, but not a lot. And the assumption being that those properties are still doing very well, they're still being valued the same too. Um, so discounts aren't really happening for the most part. Of course, I'm sure people here and there have gotten some small discounts. We did too. 
um, but mostly across the board, there's no deep discounts. Um, and nobody really has a crystal ball. So no one knows where things are going. And that's, I probably should have said that first. That's a good caveat is no matter what I say, I'm not an economist. I'm not an expert in this. I'm not a time traveler. So we don't know what's going to happen. Um, but here's my opinion. And, and you're welcome to disagree with it. And I'd love to have a conversation about why you disagree with it. But I see cap rates actually compressing. Um, and for multifamily anyway, for commercial big multifamily that are um, really producing well during this situation. And, and I think that you had a whole bunch of people who got their butts handed to them in retail, in um, office space, hotels, motels. Those people got destroyed in COVID and, and it sucks. And I'm really sorry that that happened to them but they're looking for yield. They're looking for any store of value where they can put their money that's not going to be destroyed. And I think um, everyone's really kind of seeing how multifamily fared in all of this and it's attractive to a lot of people. So I think competition is definitely going to grow for multifamily. Um, the people who have a foothold are probably going to have a little bit easier time maintaining it. And the people who are brand new are probably going to struggle because I think a lot of people are going to be jumping into this uh, niche. And of course, it's already a popular one to begin with. So uh, competition is just going to be higher, which means pricing is probably going to be higher and cap rates are going to compress. Uh, money is just flooding to multifamily. We had a, a property that we were raising money for during COVID. And me and my partners were a little unsure of how actually that money raising situation would go. We, we thought, obviously we thought the worst that we were not going to be able to raise money. turns out we raised a lot of money very quickly. Um, a lot of people were sick of the roller coaster that is the stock market. It's up one day setting new records. It's down the next day setting new records. So people are kind of just looking for uh, something that is easy, something they don't have to think about. And I think multifamily passive investing is that person. Um, so my my thinking is that as long as rates interest rates stay low and demand stays high you're going to continue to see multifamily go up and up um, but i'm curious what your crystal ball is saying and and of course i am only one opinion here so if you have a differing opinion or you have the same opinion let me know down in the comments i would love to uh, talk with you or and if you want to send me an email that works too fearfreepassive at gmail.com or just head over to fearfreepassive.com and, and you can schedule a call there too. So uh, I'd love to hear what you think, but either way, I, I'm hoping we're past the worst of this COVID situation. Um, everybody's talking about a second wave and how cases are spiking. And um, I, I don't really know what to think, to be completely honest with you. I'm, I'm really hoping we're past the worst of it, uh, but time will tell. And whatever comes, we'll have to make arrangements and we'll be flexible, but uh, I, I just appreciate you all being here and sharing this journey with us. So if I can be of any help to you, let me know. I'd love to talk to you. Send me an email, schedule a call, but either way, I hope to talk to you again very soon, uh, hopefully this week. Um, we're getting back to a very normal schedule, so that shouldn't be a problem. But again, talk to you soon. Thanks everyone.